So, Mr. Sheriff, um, how did Between Clay and Dust start? Why did you decide to write a novel about two dying arts with a wrestler and a courtesan? Um, it started as an exploration of uh, the relationship between uh, power and self-discipline. And then it became the story of Gaurjan and Ustad Ramzi and how the two artists were faced with uh, almost the same choices and one of them made good choices and another one bad. And um, I wanted to show how we always have good choices available to us, that we, uh, we do not necessarily always um, exercise them perhaps because of reasons of ego or uh, reasons of misplaced sense of duty, something like that. Um, now, do you have a writing routine? And can you share it with us? Um, I have a breakfast routine. And that is very important. That is more important than any writing routine because without it, no writing will ever get done. Fine, fair enough. So Pakistani writing today is being celebrated uh, abroad, by which I mean Pakistani writing in English. Um, do you think that there's a reason that it took uh, this long for Pakistani writers to be noticed elsewhere? And um, do you think that there's a particular reason or do you think it's just a coincidence that suddenly people are gaining international attention and doing well? Um, I think it's an unbalanced sort of situation. It's not something um, that I really think is a proud moment for uh, Pakistan fiction or literature uh, as such because um, as, as happened with uh, the Indian uh, literary boom or the Indian literature in English, uh, there was a lot of focus on uh, Indian writers writing uh, in English, um, but no relevant uh, interest in Indian writers writing in the regional languages. Uh, and you know any effort to translate them into English and publish them, which is um, a very unique phenomenon. And the same phenomenon is being repeated with the Pakistani uh, English fiction writers. Uh, I'm, I, I belong to that category, but I have no shame in saying that you know this is not a balanced situation. And without a good translations of Urdu fiction, mm -hmm. uh, which which can be done, which uh, which do exist. Uh, without uh, equally uh, presenting them to the world, we cannot really have any Pakistani literature scene. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it would be the kind of scene where you have, you know, immigrant angst or uh, terror themes and stuff like that uh, being produced for a very Western market. Mm -hmm. And they really uh, do not have much to do with, with, with Pakistan as such. And none of this has been translated into into Urdu, so we really do not know how they will be received. Uh, once we have that, you know, equality that Urdu literature is translated into English and English literature produced by Pakistan writers gets translated into Urdu, then we can have a more balanced talk about, you know, uh, the relevant merits, and then we, then we can have a debate. Right now, it's not an equal situation, and uh, I don't think that uh, there is um, really that that much. Of, um, of a phenomenon in terms of uh, literary merit mm -hmm. with, you know, with the Pakistani writers writing in English. Thank you. Um, and uh, what are you working on at the moment, since it's always something? Um, I'm, I'm finalizing the plot lines of a couple of stories, and uh, I'm working on a novel. It's called uh, A Hero of Our Times. It's, uh, the first chapter was published in the Halka's Talka magazine's fiction issue. Um, it's about a Pakistani bookworm or a Karachi bookworm and a Russian artist. And it's, uh, uh, it's about the revival of a beloved institution through, you know, uh, through the coming together of many disparate people, uh, just you know, through a common outlook on, on life. Oh, wonderful. Um, now, Between Clay and Dust uh, is very pared down in terms of language and spare writing, which is, uh, at least I found it to be quite unusual for, for this part of the world. And, you know, um, so is it, uh, is, that, is that something that happens in all of your work? Is it a hallmark of your writing? Or did you sort of come up with the style for this particular book? No, it, it, it was for this particular book. And uh, I, uh, it, it took me about 10 years to write it. And uh, the final draft is not too different in terms of the story uh, from the first draft which in, in, in about uh, you know, 2000, around 2001. And uh, 
The reason it took me this long to, you know, decide on the narrative style and the voice was was to uh, was was that I I was not sure, you know, how exactly this story could be told, and if I if I had removed if I if I had put in a lot of details, and if I had put in a lot of dialogue and maybe you know uh, uh, increased uh, the the length of the uh, the novel, uh, I think it would have diluted its its um, effect and uh, the this particular narrative voice would not have worked in that mm -hmm. case. Uh, and finally, who are the writers you most admire? Among the contemporary writers, I really like Isaac Bashwe Singer. Um, uh, I like uh, Muhammad Khalid Akhtar, Shams Rahman Farooqi, Nayir Masood. Um, and then among the classical writers, uh, I'm a great fan of Dickens, Victor Hugo, Laguna de Duma, Maupassa. Uh, I think everybody should read them. Um, they, they really know. Uh, I mean, between them, there's no human experience that, that's not explored and, you know, uh, commented upon uh, very, in a very masterly fashion between, between them. So, yes. Thank you.